Okay, so if you're, if you're in here, we're going to be talking about how to build a good landing page. Um, and why you want to know about that is because when done right, you can really increase your business as well as the number of leads you generate as opposed to just the website. Thank you. Woo. Okay. So how to build a good landing page. Um, uh, by show of hands here, who, I'll just say designers and developers, raise your hand. Wow, a lot. How about marketers and entrepreneurs? Okay. See, to, to design the right landing page that generates a lot of leads for your customer and or your own products and services, it really takes those four types of people that have expertise in building a landing page that is well optimized as well as that generates leads for you. So there's not really a unicorn that can generate do all of this and do it well. And that's why over the last few years I've really made it my mission to work with developers, designers, uh, the marketers, the entrepreneur, and um, to figure out the best way to generate lots of leads because otherwise how are you going to do business, right? Um, the anatomy is pretty simple. I mean, there's really about five components when you're looking at a landing page from the images to the um, up there on the left-hand side would be the headline, the form on the right side, and some features and, and benefits. So there's not a lot of components to a landing page. Um, to consider. Um, a landing page is, is the, the whole purpose of a landing page is to generate leads from those clicks. And so in the difference between that and your website is on your website you might look at the Google Analytics and go great there are people on my site but did it generate leads? Probably not as much as if you had a landing page. Okay. Um, Something to consider before you start building your landing pages. And one, one thing to note is that you should have as many landing pages as you have products and services. Um, whether you're a freelancer or your client, um, or even like an e-commerce site. Typically, I know the people up in Boca with Office Depot, they manage over 10,000 landing pages. That's a lot of landing pages that are very product specific. So. Um, but yeah, consider your offer first, whether you're going to have something that you're going to give in return to your uh, visitor and what kind of information you want to capture on the lead form. And then we're going to just dive into the four different uh, areas, uh, the four, four elements from design to optimization and uh, marketing as well as how to measure it properly. Okay. Um, as it pertains to design, Layout is really important. You're going to do a lot of that in the A-B testing. So placement, usually you'll see a form on the right-hand side. Um, also, images. You can use stock images. I think most of us do. But depending on the, what kind of product or service you have, especially if it's like a local small business, you might want to use a more organic image and not just a cookie-cutter um, stock image. And I bet when you do that testing, you'd see that the conversion would go higher. Um, also responsive, obviously it's 2016, everybody has smartphones, it goes without say that your developer designer should know how to make a responsive uh, design. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, colors and branding, that's a obviously very big piece of any design. One site that I really like is um, designmatters.com and it really goes into the whole psychology of, of colors, what they mean. and kind of one step back when you're designing that landing page, talk to your team about the branding, looking at your logo and assets and making sure that it's consistent. If your colors are blue and green, you're not going to make a landing page that has, you know, black and orange, for example. Um, design tips. When you're designing, you, you, as far as your offer goes, you want to figure out whether it's a click-through landing page or a lead gen landing page. And the click-through is basically like if they're going to, once they land on the page, they don't actually give their information. Uh, they actually have to click on, let's say, join me, and then go to the next step to um, either create their profile or something like that. Whereas a lead gen page, which is mostly what I do, is um, uh, basically a contact page, and we're capturing data and then dropping it into the uh, CRM. Uh, no navigation menus. That goes without say no navigation menus on the header if you're going to put any pages that are hyperlinked or linked to another site or like your actual website pages 
make sure that you do it on the footer. Um, so no navigational menus uh, on the header. Make sure that your call to action, your images, your uh, headline, uh, everything that's important is above the fold. You don't want to make the user have to scroll down to see all the important information. I see that all the time, especially with the call to action button being below the fold and, you know, that's a, a big no-no right there. And these are small things that you'll see when you're doing the A-B testing. If you're measuring everything on Google Analytics and looking at it, these are the small things that inch up 2%, 3%. And so for us as an agency, it's very important because we generate about 30,000 leads a month for hundreds of clients in 12 different industries. 2% can be a big difference in the number of leads that we generate. So uh, here's a sample design. As you can see, I mean, I, I'm always a big fan of giving back to the, the user. So in this case, this broker is giving a, a guide to uh, um, mortgages. And so, but all they're asking for is an email address and two questions. Very short form, easy to do. So that's, those are the design elements. Now I'm gonna to talk to you guys about optimization and what that means. You know, with optimization, it's basically trying to make something as, as functional as you can, okay? And these are the uh, components uh, when it comes to optimization. You have uh, the copy and the headline, um, again, we have marketers in our company, but we work with writers. It might be simple that they're only writing a little bit of copy, but it pays to have an actual writer that tries 100 different headlines, as opposed to just your marketer or sales guy or tech, which that's usually not their area. Um, the call to action, you're gonna try many different ones with many different color buttons. Um, the forms, the form is something that's very important because whether you go long or, or short, doesn't really always determine the, the actual conversion. For example, we do insurance forms, auto insurance, life insurance, and there are many fields, and how we overcome that um, conversion is by putting it in four steps. So you see a little progress bar, and we ask for their actual personal information at the end of the form, not at the beginning of the form. Now, short form is always gonna convert easily, um, but um, also determining which forms you wanna use. There's lots of plugins like Contact7. I know the guys downstairs, Ninja Forms, they also do uh, forms. Or you might want to have your developer do your own form in JavaScript. Um, something that we do big on all our forms is we have validation. We work with a company called Newstar, and um, they'll know if the email is not real. They'll know if the phone number is disconnected. And so that prevents the lead from going into uh, the CRM. And that's a good thing because you don't want your salespeople spending valuable time calling bogus leads, which is usually about 10, 15% of what's entered into most forms. So getting data validation is important. And some of it, you can actually just do it on your own. For example, in our forms, if you type in your zip code, the city and state auto-populate. That makes it easier for the user than having to type it out, especially if we're talking about a, a mobile device. Um, oh yeah, I actually wanted to point out the Blue Apron. In the Blue Apron example, as you can see, they actually do have um, uh, the, the menu links at the top, the buttons, and the reason they do so, and I talked to the people at their company, is that this was like a new service, and so they can't really educate the, the consumer, the user, just on a landing page. So they decided to do that, and then the, this would be like a click-through um, landing page, because you can see you click the Join Now, then at the next page, it asks you for your information instead of it up front. Um, optimization tips. So integrating your landing page form with the uh, CRM, like uh, Salesforce, or um, uh, email service provider like Constant Contact. Um, marketing automation like HubSpot. I mean, this is very important because when you're doing a marketing campaign on a landing page and you're sending tens and thousands of clicks a day, uh, the speed to contact is absolutely crucial. Um, people are not going to wait around. Actually, there's a study from MIT that shows after five and a half minutes from the time somebody clicks, let's say, get a quote, after five and a half minutes, the chances of you ever getting in touch with that person is de decreased by 64%. So I know most of us are busy and, and, and you know, sales teams are not always going to respond very quickly, but one way that you can overcome that is by putting in some marketing automation, autoresponders. Um, 
the, the what to test when you're doing the A-B testing, basically colors, the images, and the call to action is what you want to test. No paragraphs, obviously. Um, use bullets, and that's the A-B testing there. Um, this is an actual campaign that we did for Empire Today, and their whole goal was basically to get um, estimates scheduled right on their site. And um, so as you can see, there's four different um, uh, steps to the process. Um, apparently, James Bond likes um, Heineken. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a great campaign right here of right target audience. They considered location, where they're going. Um, there was a very heavy paid search as well as social media campaign around this when it came out. Um, and then, yeah, what, what channels are you going to consider? Is it going to be Facebook? Is it going to be email marketing, paid search? Those are all areas. But one area that you might consider is uh, putting together an affiliate program where people are actually driving traffic to your site. And a good source for that are bloggers. So you might use a banner or something like that. Um, the ad designs, they must be consistent with your brand and your uh, actual, actual website. Um, emphasizing the benefits and not the features, that's very important as well. Um, here's another campaign from Mayflower. They focused on reviews, which is real important, adding testimonials. And a big thing I think David talked about yesterday in one of the tracks is um, putting an SSL certificate on your site. We'll do that for the landing pages as well because uh, that's a trust factor for some people, okay? Um, limiting the social media links. I mean, most guys who build landing pages are big on social media links. I don't like them. And if I do put them, it's at the, at the footer um, because all you're doing on that landing page is potentially driving them out of your website. And uh, if you do a video, um, don't put just a link from YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're hosting it. Actually ask your developer to put it on your site, host it there. Because the only other thing that you're going to get from, from that is the data from YouTube, which is not that important anyways. What you want is to convert on your page. Um, here's a great campaign from uh, Airbnb. And as you can see, the form is done uh, going across instead of uh, vertically, which, again, this would be click-through um, type of landing page as well. And uh, last, measuring. This is a part that a lot of people miss when they're uh, you know, either doing their marketing campaign or building their website or, in this case, a uh, lead gen uh, campaign using a landing page, is the analytics. You know, you, you need to install the code in there and tracking codes, pixels, whatever you need to do, and be able to look at that daily and track it to see if it's actually working. So that's very important. And then that's it. Once you launch that campaign, track it, analyze the data, and tweak it again and optimize it until you're ready to go. I mean, we've had landing pages that took us six months to get it right in multiple marketing campaigns, and then all of a sudden you saw conversion go from 5% to 7% to 9%. Just small tweaks. So, um, and that's it. That's my presentation, and thank you. <laughs> Questions? No, it doesn't. It, that's a great question. No, it doesn't stay like that. It actually goes back. Right, exactly. No, so only on the desktop do you see it this way. I, I believe on certain tablets, the larger ones, you see it like this as well. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, on your actual website. Yeah, on the website. Yep, you can just install a plugin that that actually, like a video player. Right. Oh, it doesn't matter where it's hosted, no, yeah. Thank you.